Okay, it's me, Jordy Pete Redding on Hollywood Balls. Been waiting for this one a long time. But before we do, please, uh, would you subscribe to the station on YouTube so you can catch all the interviews and all the action. Okay, on we go. Uh, my next guest, as I say, one I've really been uh, looking forward to. Uh, it's been a while in the making, and it's my favourite 90 minutes. If you remember, we featured Lee Clark, and it's time for one of his teammates. Uh, the, date, the date was May the 9th, 1993. It was the last home game of the season at St. James's Park. And here to talk us through that game, uh, party, stroke party, uh, is NUFC legend John Beresford. Uh, John, welcome to my favourite 90 minutes. You know what? Thank you very much. It's an absolute pleasure. And it's always a pleasure to speak to you, sir. I like the black and white in the background. Always puts a smile on my face. Before we start, and I do have to mention it, you know, um, we put a little teaser out and we've had quite a few Pompey fans on to me this morning in my ear saying, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, he was a Newcastle legend, but he also was at Fratton Park. So uh, Jez and all the boys have been on saying not to forget that. So I can't. Um, and <laughs> well, I'll say the best wishes, uh, which is great. OK, so. The game that you've chosen was that last game, uh, the Leicester City game. Um, so we could, we'll dive straight in. The job had been done. Uh, Lindisfarne were playing in the background. The sun was shining. <laughs> yeah. I was there. I was in the Gallagher. Um It could have just been easy, John, to lay off, lay off the gas and party with the fans, but that was never the entertainers, was it? No, it wasn't. Uh, it, was, it was a strange one as well because we got promoted against Grimsby. Yeah. Then we had to, we had to play... We had to play a game. I can't remember who it was, right? And we, I think, if memory serves, it was before the Leicester game. It was like a, right. and it, we went 1-0 down. I always remember, we went 1-0 down. And Keegan spat his dummy out. And I mean, spat his dummy out. We were a little bit angry of it. We just got promoted. But mm. it was just the way it was. But when, he, but when Keegan loses it, and a lot of people see it, he wears his arm sleeve. Yeah, I mean, we got it both barrels. And he actually left. He left the game. We went 1-0 down. And at half-time, he went ridiculous. But then we won that. We finished up scoring two goals. We won 2-1. We came in after the game, and he'd gone. Terry McDermott, this is true, Terry McDermott was on. He was like, oh, no, he, he's gone back to see his family. You know, somebody's not well. And I remember Barry Venison going, that's a disgrace. Ending in a bit, you know, he's slaughtered us, and now he's pissed off. You know, this, and, and we were like, well, calm down, Venison. Oh, this and that. And you remember, we've just been promoted. Right, so anyhow, we kind of went, got got to training. Uh, I think it was a couple of days later. The gaffer came back. He was back to his normal self. He was bubbly and everyone was having a great time. And then it was like, look forward to this game, the Leicester game. It was like, you know, let's, you know, let, and I remember just the gaffer saying, if we're going to do it, let's do it in style. Right. And as, you know, I mean, you set the scene. The sun was shining. It's said Linda's and sort of like they put a scaffold up for them to play. Yeah, yeah. It, it was just, and there was a buzz about the place. And anybody who's been to St James's Park, and you get, you can get caught up in the emotion of it. You know, the fans were on, we were flying, and the problem was, problem for Leicester was we were, the players were up for it. Yeah. And that that first forty five minutes was <laughs> freaky. Was freaky. That's the best way to describe it. It was freaky. I um, I knew. I knew uh, Walshy, who was there, you know, he actually scored Walshy. I knew him from playing against him a few times. And uh, what, what we like with language on here, am I allowed to explain what, how he said it? Or I've got to tone it. Tone it a bit, uh, you would. Tone it, yeah. He, he, what I say, <laughs> Walshy went, will you stop and effing <laughs> slow? Because, you know, it, 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 you know, when you get to like four or five, yeah. it was, you know, as players are talking to each other, and you, they, they kind of, I think Leicester are in the playoffs. They were, you know, they, you know, they, they were a decent side, and it, it was like, you know, can you please just give it a rest? So, uh, uh, yeah, um, it was, it was just an unbelievable pleasure to, to be involved in, especially forty-five minutes. And also, when you say that, you know, it reminds me, and, and the reason that we do this is to get, you know, the fans see everything. They, they watch the game, they go to the game, they come home, they see it on Match of the Day, they see the players and the managers, uh, but they don't know what's going on behind the scenes. And it's interesting, uh -huh. to, you know, the players, because obviously you, you interact on the pitch. It sort of reminds me of when you were at school and your, your, your team was getting beat heavily and the referee used to want to blow up early to save any further embarrassment, yeah. you know. Um, but, yeah, yeah so... <laughs> <laughs> but surely, I mean, 
If Leicester yeah. wanted to finish at half time, no, no God. I'm saying Leicester just wanted to finish the game at half time. It was yeah. That. Um, no, and it's funny because we came in at half time and the gaffer was just laughing, and Tim and Terry Mike were just saying, you know, uh, the, the, he was very sarcastic, and you know, the gaffer started by going, "It's just not good enough, boys. You know, I want more from you." So it was all that as well. Um, and I, I don't think anybody could have expected that scoreline to to be sort of, of what it was. And Keegan actually said, um, "Is there any?" Because he says, I, "You know, everybody's doing so well." He says, "But is there anybody who would like to come off and let somebody else join in?" And I actually put my hand up and went, "I'll come off," because I knew it wasn't going to get any better. Yeah. You, you, there was no way we could score another six in the second half, no. and I wanted to save her. Also, to take it in as well, mm. um, and I, I remember I got a slight, I got a slight sort of like niggle, and I thought, you know, I got a bit of an hamstring, and I just thought, you know what? And I said, and I, I think was it Gavin Peacock? I think came on for me. That's right, yeah, um, yeah, and uh, and it was like you know, just give somebody else a chance to go uh, and an experience, just just a special special occasion. And it was, I mean. You know, when you set the scene there, you could think that because of that that game um, where the gaffer had disappeared early and, and, and it sort of mm. rankled with the players, do you think that that was a, def a definite catalyst as well as, you know, let, let, what he did say, Keegan said, let's go out in style, but do you think that was sort of still in, in the back of your mind that, you know, I'm gonna, we're really going to show him what, what, what it's all about? Yeah, I mean, he always... He... The gaffer was strange in certain aspects. He was, he was always there for you, um, but he only had to give you a certain look. He only had to say a certain thing, and you were like, you were on your toes. And I think also as well, because we knew we were going up into the Premiership, and there was throughout that season, um, there were some some players who I thought would did unbelievable, did fantastic, but they got replaced. Yeah. And it was happening as the season was going on. Because yeah, I look at it and I think Kevin Sheedy played in front of me. But then all of a sudden, it was Scott Sellers was bought yeah. to replace. And then you look at like, you know, so I remember sort of like Rob Lee coming, you yeah. know, he was to, he, and he, to improve. And then it, I, think, I think who else was signed at that time? It would be Mark Robinson. Or you knew and you were like looking around yourself thinking, hang on a bit, if, mm. if I drop... You know, sort of my sort of my best way to describe it, uh, my performance, yeah. Keegan. In, and I don't mean I don't just mean in games. I mean in training. You know, the the, the standard had to be at such a peak to for you to go right. Yeah, I'm showing the gaffer that I want to be part of this team. Don't give him any reason to replace you. And a lot of the players started quickly started to realise that. So I think even when you're going into the last game of the season, yes, you've been promoted. I think people were on that last game were playing for places, right? Because <laughs> you've got you've got a big gap now for the gaffer to go and buy players to replace you, and it happened um, because, as I say, you know, uh, the first signing was I think was Peter Beardsley. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I, well, the, the the big one which I needed to to explain. Sorry, which going back to the game, like replacing Andy Cole comes in, Gavin yeah. Peacock was. Probably, one. Of, I think he, he probably saved the gaffers when they got from the, to save them in the the game before the gaffers uh, got got to the season. They nearly got relegated. Gavin right. Peacock scores at Leicester, which which shows you how how things change in twelve months. Uh, Keegan brought Andy Cole in, and we then knew, knew that I don't know we're playing with the big boys now. We can compete, you know, with with Premiership teams, and. The scalp that it finished up being, because I I didn't think he would have got rid of David Kelly, but he did, mm. which was was just it. I was gutted for David Kelly because he was just a great lad. He'd been unbelievable all season. Yeah, but it also made you realise that he got hang on a bit. The gaffer's not messing around here. If he no. if he feels he can get somebody better, he will do it. And that point as well as we look at um, currently now. You know, sides like um, uh, Sheffield United, um, who've added, Leeds have added as, as, they, as they've come yeah. up, the two Yorkshire sides. Yeah. Uh, Fulham haven't. 
And, you know, you've got to say fair play to the gaffer for doing that because you could see, he knew that, you know, as, as loyalty goes, loyalty's not going to keep you in the Premier League. So no. the fact that the team was transforming, for the fans it was exciting, but also for the players you must have thought, wow, this is, this is, this is changing and, and, you know, we're going to be in it for the long haul. Yeah, absolutely. And it weren't, I think the difference is as well, we got, when you, he was even saying things to ourselves, he was saying things to the press, which I look back now and go, yes. It, it, and it was just, it was like little nuggets that yeah. drop into your head when he's going, he never once said, you know, we're, we're getting up just to stay in the Premier League. You get, do you understand? It was like, no, we're, 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 he'd always be dropping in. We're up there to compete with Manchester United, and we're like, we're not going to be here. He <laughs> <laughs> just got promoted, you know. But he, 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 he saw beyond what we could see. But I think he needed to keep convincing us. And you know, I remember like little things he would say. You know, uh, he would say little things to me, and 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 then I, I sort of like said to Rob Lee. I guess what he said to me, and he's gone, oh, he said something similar to me. And, he, and what he would say, like, was, you know, there's nobody out there I would want other than you in your position. And he would just go, I need you today to make the difference. And it's just to make you feel so important. And right. and you were a major part of what, what he wanted. And as I say, and I think all them factors just made it what it was. Uh, you mentioned David Kelly there, Ned Kelly and Cody both scored hat tricks. Who got the ball, John? Yeah. Uh, do you know what? <laughs> I'm not sure, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm presuming it would be the first one who got the hat trick. I, I haven't got a clue, but I would have hoped that uh, Coley might have given it to David Kelly because, as I say, I wonder if David Kelly, I don't know, I don't think he did get told before that game. I think it was after mm. they got told that, you know, he was, you know, Keegan was getting rid of him, and I, I, I know the story of sort of David Kelly going getting called into the office, and Keegan saying, "You know, look, I'm, you know, I'm going to let you go." I think I think it was Wolves. I think came in for him, yeah. and he was like, "You're joking!" You know, and I, what do you mean you're letting me go? We've just got to the Premiership. I've just scored that hat trick on my, my last game. I've just scored that trick. What do you mean you're getting rid of me? And he was right. And then he just went, "Well, I'm ever sorry, but I'm signing Peter Beasley. He's better than you." <laughs> but that's how King was being like David Kelly. Was going, I can't believe it. Um, and he was—he was devastated. And we didn't really get a chance to say goodbye to David Kelly because he, he moved in the summer. Yeah. And it was—it well, was—it was astounding, really, uh, because of you know, you, you'd have thought you still—I thought we'd have still needed. David Kelly in the squad, you know, if he, if he got injured and whatever. But as I say, I think what Kevin was trying to do is to say, look, you're not going to be my first choice. I don't want to just keep you here as a, as, as a replacement. I will give you the opportunity. And I think he would have said to David Kelly, look, you can stay, but you won't play. If Peter Bees is fit and Andy Cole's fit, you ain't going to play. And it's a shame, really, because I think David Kelly must have thought, well, I still want to play. David, I think Ned would have been probably 29, 30-ish. So he'd have probably thought, no, you know, it's a good move for me. But, uh, uh, yeah, it was just just a massive shock. And, and again, as you say, prior to that season, probably scored one of the most important um, goals against Portsmouth at home. Um, it just seemed like it was never coming. And uh, he lashed one in at the Gallagher end. And um, I just remember it was absolute pandemonium. And you, you talk about the, the win at Leicester with, with Gavin Peacock keeping us up. But that, that day against Portsmouth, it, it sort of, it was oh, so key, yeah. you know. And he'll always be remembered mm -hmm. for that. And the only Sunderland player to pull red and white on to run out as a sub for Sunderland and still get applauded onto the pitch. So that's... I know. That's oh, the oh, of it's it. costing that line. People don't realise how big that is. Um, <laughs> And speaking of how big it was, I mean, the fans, you know, I went to most games that season, home and away. And the, the, I was talking to Mick Lowe's, the, the, the commentator, just, just recently, we were, we were laughing about it. The, the, the one 2 one at Derby, and you were saying how things had changed and turned around from the defeat at Leicester to, to beating them. But also Derby, because the season before, they, we we had about uh, three players sent off. We got beat 4-1. And we went back. I think it was third game of the season. Won 2-1 at Derby. And all the Toon fans at the end were singing, we're going to win the league. And it was as if someone, <laughs> something special was happening, you know? I, it, it, it's hard to explain. Um, but once you're around 
KK. Um, he makes you believe. He, mm. he's, he's got this aura that, you know, some people say, oh, yeah, you know, like, we'll go up this year. We're going to win the league. And they say it for the sake of saying it. Yeah. Keegan said it kind of knowing it. I know it's, 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 it's hard to explain because he would, I mean, he said things to me about when I signed in that summer and I was, you know, I was going to go to Liverpool but failed a medical and then, yeah. and then all of a sudden he, came, he comes to me and he goes, look, this is a blessing in disguise. And the, his words were, look, don't worry, you're going to sign for me today. We will get promoted this year. We'll get into premiership. Also, once we've been in the Premiership, we'll get in Europe and I'll get you in, in, the, in the England squad. And you're like, I'm thinking he's, he's, he's on drugs. You know? <laughs> but within 18 months, yeah. every one of them things was, was true. You know, and you're just going, it was just ridiculous. To, I mean, like you said, we got promoted to the Premiership. and I, I remember we struggled the first few games just to get a feel of it. I think... I think after about five, six games, I think we were probably in the bottom three. Must mm. have been, because we didn't win many games. I think we were only drawn. And then we finished third. <laughs> yeah. Now, a, a team coming up to then finish third, get in Europe, and, uh, you know, as I say, it, it, it's, it's, that is freaky. It is freaky. It's mm. like, you know, you'll never, you'll never see that again. I think, I mean, you were just talking previously about Sheffield United. Uh, yeah. Chris Wilde is a big mate of mine. I've, I've actually, can you believe I've actually played under Chris for three teams. Wow. Yeah, there you go. His first ever man- his, yeah, his first ever manager's job was Sunday League, Bradway. And we actually played in the Sheffield United kit. And when I packed in, I would be in about 33. I took a year off and then he phoned me up and he went, Bez, come and play for me. And I went, why are you managing? He went, Bradway. I went, Sunday League. You want me to play Sunday League? You're having a laugh, aren't you? He went, don't worry, don't worry. He says, we've got a fantastic pitch. You'll love it. Great lads and all this and that. I remember turning up, I had to pay five quid subs. And, I was like, <laughs> and it was, but what I'm saying is, he's going like to say, Chef United yeah. and Chris Wilder knows, he, he's learned off his old school. He's very much like Kevin. He's very much about camaraderie, about the players getting together and getting them to believe. And everything about it is, right, okay. And, and, and being, being honest with them, knowing that, you know, don't you know as much as as well as you've done? I'm going to improve, and I, as I say, and I, in fact, I'm playing golf with him on tomorrow. I'm actually playing golf with him tomorrow, and I was supposed to play last week, but he was so busy yeah. signing Brewster. So he, he's like, now he's saying, look, you know, the pressure's on, but he said, but I'm trying to say to the players, we've got to move forward, and that's what Kevin Keegan was all about. It was every year was. Where's the next step? Who's the next player to get? And it's, you know, it's weird when you're involved in it. It, it just keeps you on your toes because you just think, well, I, I, when it's something so special, you want to be part of it. So you make sure you think, well, yourself, I don't want to, I don't want to get eased out of this. And, you know, when you, you, you talk about that and, and players getting it, I think probably that's something that's missing, not just at Newcastle, but maybe in football in general at the moment. When you had a, the players that moved, you know, yourself, uh, Rob Lee, the players that came up, Warren Barton, Andy Cole, you know, it, it was instilled into them. And the, the players then understood what, what it meant to, uh, to, to the city, to, to the fans. And in turn, the players themselves became fans. You know, you, you speak to yourself. Uh, we've spoken with Warren Barton. Um, uh, we were talking about playing under Rude Hullard, how as a manager, he didn't get it. Um, yeah. And it's quite amazing. But if you've got that opportunity and you do understand it, I suppose it's half the battle, isn't it? Yeah, and this is why, um, like what Kevin used to do, is the, what, he, was, he was very integral with it. I don't think the, the younger lads really knew how important they were at the time. But yeah. like I said, now especially, Lee Clark, Steve Watson, Robbie Elliott, Steve Howie, because they're local lads and they understand how the, how the place works up in the North East. Any new sign-in, they would take them out, take them for a drink, go to the big market, go to the Eastside, and they actually mix with the fans. And, it, and you understand it because you've lived it. But it's, Newcastle is intense. You know, they want to know. They want to know who we're playing on Saturday, um, yeah. who, who do you think will play. And I think you, you either embrace it or it can frighten you. Yeah. I loved it. I loved the fact that somebody wanted to know what was happening. And 
it, it was like, do not let me down, you know, don't don't let my family down, don't let me down, I've got to go to work. And I and yeah. it's it, it, and I think, as I said, when we used to go out, the lads used to go out as a massive group. The Tuesday, there was a Tuesday night group, mm. but we used to go for a bite to eat at Uno's. Yeah. And the majority of the, the squad came. I don't mean the team, the majority of the squad would come. Um, some people drink more than others, some don't, but it was it but the but what happens when you have alcohol and when you go out in that kind of group mentality, anything that's on your chest or anything that's on your mind, it gets said and it gets ironed out. I think Keegan encouraged that. He encouraged that for people to go out. And also, what's nice is the, the fans see the players as a group and go, hang on a bit, they're having it. They're, they're yeah, that's it. And, that, and that's, that, I think that's what's changed now, though, is a modern day game. I do feel sorry for them because... There's cameras everywhere. It's like me on my phone now. You know, the accessibility that can go straight out into the public domain yeah. is, is it must be frightening for him because he don't get me wrong. Like say, he, lads, was, we were drinking and you could you could you could show a photo of all that was having a drink. They could say, well, that's a disgrace. No, it isn't. We're having a social drink. You know, we, we you know it's our time to socialise and be with yourself. Some lads have probably only have one bottle of Budweiser. Some might have about 10, but that's their choice is what they cook. But I think the, the what kills the camaraderie in the modern day player now is the is, is social media. Yep. And it's not it, it it's kind of used more as a detriment than it is to promote. Do you understand what I mean? I always sure. think you know they want they want to see a player uh, sort of like, I don't know. <sighs> In, in, in a bad light rather than a shining light. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and you, you talk about those special times. We had we had friends from Manchester that, that season, the first season in the Premier League, and they came up to have a weekend. And of course, we took them to the big market, to the quayside. Um, and they just turned around and it was 11 o'clock. And he said, you know, the match was, the match finished at five o'clock he said and it's 11 o'clock <laughs> everyone's still singing football songs and he says running yeah. through the big market singing the andy cole and blade he said what's yeah. going on he said it's like a parallel unit. he said it's just he said it's from when you wake up to when you go to bed it's just like newcastle united party newcastle united party and it just yeah. seemed at that time mm -hmm. that's what it was it was and, and the thing is is it's you know, we, we would join in it. Don't get me wrong, you know, like we would go out. We were lucky we'd get looked after, you know, you know, we went to Julie's nightclub, you know, the bouncers would keep an eye on us. Never, you know, never been in there, club. never seen you in there, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Only once or twice. <laughs> but the thing of it is, there was no kind of cordoned off, there was no like red rope VIP. And we weren't that. No, we mixed with no. fans. All, all we would have, we'd have a couple of guys who would keep an eye on us because sometimes, you know, we, we, we would always speak to fans and everything else, but sometimes, you know, when some fans get a little bit carried away, you need to go, yeah. can we just have a break, you know? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, but it was always done in the right way. Don't get me wrong, but there's another side to it as well, though. I remember, though, because I was talking to Rob Lee, I was a long time ago, and we were talking about, we ne but I would never go out if we'd lost, because mm. I, didn't, I didn't think it was the right thing to do. I think, you know, even, I could have had the best game ever, but if we'd been beat, I just don't think it's uh, it's a good look to be going out and then in, and enjoying yourself. Yeah, it was just just I, I'm I'm not saying you know ooh, certain players would do it. I, I'm not saying they're wrong. It's just for me, I was saying don't put yourself in a situation because it means like for you, it means such it means so much to a, uh, a fan who's worked all week. You know, he's spent good money to come and watch you, and he's disappointed as well because the game hasn't gone well. So I always think you know don't. You know, it's like that. you have modern day players now and they go and spending God knows thousands of pounds. I know they can afford it, but you just don't rub yeah. the fans' noses in it. It's just everybody's different mentality. But for me, that that for me is is the the club, New Newcastle and what Kevin Keegan did made not just the football club, it made the city as one. So okay. it was you know, whether it was inviting, you know, a, a when it was <laughs> when it was school holidays and he's got all the he got thousands of fans coming down to watch you and that was brilliant but it was a nightmare sometimes because when you're so because we all have to sign autographs and you sign in hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and it gets to a point you're freezing cold now you've been stood out for like nearly an hour 
and you go, right, I'm sorry, I'm going to go. And then they've got like mums writing in saying, my, my kid's come down, he's waited hours and, he, and he, John Beresford's walked off. And I'm thinking, yeah, but you didn't tell me about just signing hundreds before. And sometimes you have you three hours signing autographs. Yeah, you, 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 sometimes you couldn't <laughs> win. I remember, I remember Cole, because Cole, he struggled with the cold, you know? You know, yeah. like, so he, once he got sweat on, he, he just goes straight in. And it was rightly so, because he, he, he would get, he would catch cold, you know? And the last thing we wanted to, but the fans would kick off and he'd go, Andy Cole, he's arrogant, doesn't want to sign autographs. Cole, yeah. he wasn't arrogant. It's not that he didn't want to sign autographs. It's just that when he'd got a sweat on, he would go straight in. Mm -hmm. Some lads would, some lads that. It's, but, it was, but, it, but I think Keegan would come out and he'd explain it to the fans. And, and I, think, I think they got it. And, and, that, and that's, that was the special thing of what, what Newcastle had. Um, to get that again, I'd be, I, 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 I just, just don't see it. You know, some no, you no. need a manager that fits at the right time. Um, it, 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 for me, it was like the perfect storm. I think the city was ready for it. It'd yeah. seen so much at the time, and you haven't, you haven't really been watching much good football. Um, and then all of a sudden, Keegan brought these players in, and, and for six and a half years, I was under Kevin. It was just. It was just a pleasure. I could not wait to get into training. I could yeah. not wait. And then, and that buzz of waiting for the game coming up at the weekend or whatever, you know, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, it was, oh, it, 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 I'll take it to my grave. It was just, what a buzz. Brilliant stuff. Um, last question for you. Uh, back to that match of your favourite 90 minutes. You've got the Hollywood ball, Hollywood Ball's honours to do. Um, who, would you, who would you give to the man the match to that day? Other than myself, I was brilliant in the first 45. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, it, do you know what? I think there was there was so many to choose from. David Kelly, Ned Kelly, I think what he did in that game was brilliant. was absolutely brilliant. Um, his, his movement, I can remember him, you know. And he knew he was under pressure as well. You know, we signed Andy Cole and rumours were going around that, you know, Keegan's going to sign new players. Um, so yeah he showed he, he was top man that day great stuff uh, ladies and gentlemen of Hollywood Balls absolute pleasure um, for all football fans and especially Newcastle fans to hear John Beresford's favourite 90 minutes John we'll be in touch and uh, we'll get you back on soon thanks for your time thank you so much mate and I look forward to speaking to you soon enjoy yourself cheers <laughs>